The Kardashians promote fit teas, body wraps, and other supplements to their massive audiences, all while allegedly getting tens of thousands of dollars worth of treatment to maintain their figures. Actors and models grace red carpets and magazine covers with their impossibly perfect bodies, claiming that they achieve it with just healthy eating and going for walks, while at the same time, they are skipping meals and abusing laxatives. And Liver King advertises an aggressive workout regime and a strict meat-based diet, and sells his own supplements, when in reality his insanely jacked body is in part due to steroids. We have a lot to get through today, but first I want to ask you a question. Have you ever had chicken balls? And no, I don't mean the kind that you get like battered from a Chinese restaurant, I mean have you literally ever had a chicken's balls. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and assume that your answer is no, but I am aware for some people watching today that that may not be the case. Because as it turns out, the consumption of seemingly odd animal parts isn't actually that unusual, and it's something that's been promoted a lot online recently, especially by one guy in particular, the liver king. And I thought how better to talk about the king of carnivores himself than to do so while making vegan brownies. Fun fact, when I went to get the cocoa, I realized I have three things of this, so I seem to just keep buying it, forgetting I have it, and then buying it again. Before social media, I was rich and anonymous, and after social media, I'm still rich, but no longer anonymous, and I never expected this kind of exposure in the public eye. His name is Brian Johnson, but he's known almost exclusively online as Liver King, a username which stems from what I would call a pretty extreme diet. His so-called ancestral diet is meant to mimic what our ancestors would have eaten to keep them in peak physical condition. This is essentially a lot of raw meat and animal organs, things like animal testicles, bone marrow, hearts, and obviously liver. Plus sources of fat like animal lard, as well as some, although minimal, amounts of complex carbs like rice and potatoes. The cocoa's a bit chunky. Unlike our ancestors though, the Liver King also promotes the use of supplements, something which, I assume anyway, our ancestors wouldn't have had access to. There is a lot to be said for this diet though, because on one hand, it is focused on clean eating and eating whole foods, because as we all already know, eating processed crap really is bad for your body. It's not something I personally would ever follow. I have spent most of my life as a vegetarian and some of it as a vegan, and I don't think it's particularly healthy either, but at least it cuts out the processed food. But with that being said, I will still be enjoying the occasional instant noodle meal. It's not good for me, but I like it. And something I would also consider positive about this diet is that it isn't wasteful. Now this might sound like a weird take coming from me, seeing as I just said that I've spent most of my life not eating meat, but I do think if you're gonna eat an animal, you should eat all of it. It was killed so that you could have steak, so grow a pear and eat its pear. I do understand though that that is just a personal opinion and not everybody will feel the same way that I do, but what's not a personal opinion is the science behind the diet that Liver King promotes. Eating raw animal products, whether it's ground beef, bone marrow, liver, or even raw eggs, comes with its own risk. Raw meat can contain bad and harmful bacteria, which is meant to be killed off by the cooking process. Without that added heat brought by cooking, you're at risk for things like salmonella and E. coli, which is one of the reasons why it was such a big deal when human beings learned that we could cook food. And let's not forget that he promoted these foods under the guise that eating them and working out like him would make you look like him. Except you can't look like him because he was taking steroids. Undoubtedly, what the Liver King was promoting and what he continues to promote is an unrealistic body standard because you can't get there with just diet and exercise alone. And this isn't a new concept. Companies, celebrities, influencers have been using this as a trick to sell you things for years. They'll tell you with just a little bit of improvement and by buying their stuff, you can get to where they are. You can be perfect. But the truth is you will never get to where they are without some kind of cheat code because that's what they used. What happens then is the self-esteem of people who already had a pretty low to begin with gets lowered even more. And in some cases, these unfortunate people can develop EDs. Think about it, in the 90s and early 2000s, being skinny was the ideal, especially for women. If you wanted to be beautiful, you needed to be thin. And what happened then? 
more and more people develop restrictive EDs. Now, let me be clear. I'm not saying that the media is 100% responsible for EDs. They're obviously much more complex than that, but it doesn't help. Unlike with the early 2000s and the 90s though, we now have social media. And with that comes influencers, which includes fitness influencers. I used to just use baking soda and vinegar as a replacement for egg or sometimes flaxseed mixed with water, which I think is the fitness influencer go-to is the flaxseed one. But I've recently switched to an egg replacer because it works pretty well. Do you think they would approve of this? I don't know. These fitness influencers showcase their workout routines, their clean eating and all around healthy lifestyle, which on the surface seems like a good thing. Why wouldn't you want to promote health? But sometimes this goes too far. Some, though not all of them, will tell their audience that they always eat clean, they never cheat on their food and they never skip a workout. Then they will post pictures of their results, of their amazing but photoshopped bodies. And don't get confused, you can just as easily face tune videos now to make yourself look thinner, taller, have smoother skin, curvier, whatever you want. And because some people are being consistently told that all they need to do is work out and eat healthy and they will look like the face tuned version of these influencers, people are trying to achieve this goal, which they can't seem to succeed and they don't know why. And experts believe that this is contributing to the rise of an ED that most people don't really know about still called orthorexia. If you're not sure what this is or you haven't heard of it before, here is one definition from bodywise.ie. Orthorexia nervosa is the name given to a condition which involves a compulsive preoccupation or obsession with dietary purity. There may be preoccupation with the composition and origin of food. Priority may be given to biologically pure foods, which may contribute to significant diet limitations. To put it a little bit more simply, people who suffer from this will become obsessed with clean eating and afraid to eat anything else. And it gets so far that it takes over their entire lives. And as any DA put it, people with orthorexia become so fixated on so-called healthy eating that they actually damage their own well-being. To bring it back to the liver king, no, I'm not saying that he has this disorder by any means, but I am saying that he promotes a lifestyle based on only ever eating clean foods and working out like a crazy person. And that in itself could contribute to somebody developing this disorder. And why? Because they're trying to look like him. And I'll repeat it again because it needs repeating. You can't look like him because he was taking steroids. And on top of that, his presence online alone could be what prompted people to also start trying steroids because they might have been trying his techniques, eating his meal plans, sleeping on the floor like he does and working out to the same extent that he does too and not be getting the same results and not knowing why. So what do they do because they don't feel good enough because they might feel subprimal as Liver King calls it? They use a cheat code. And taking these things is not the same as drinking a protein shake or taking supplements. Regular intake can cause mental health problems, aggression, and even induce hallucinations. And physically, at best, it can cause severe acne, infertility, low sperm count, and stomach problems. And at worst, it can cause stroke, heart attack, induce men's risk of prostate cancer and kind of ironically cause liver problems. And the saddest part of all of this is that it's teenage boys and young men who already have self-esteem issues who are at the highest risk of taking these. And in fact, 22% of steroid users apparently started when they were teenagers before their brains and bodies had even finished developing. It is chocolate chips, although I don't think it's focusing on them. <laughs> Twenty minutes later. I will give credit where credit is due though. Like a lot of fitness influencers, Liver King had an excellent marketing strategy. Isn't that right? <laughs> Didn't he have such a good marketing strategy? Yes. <laughs> He created a character and an unachievable goal so that he could literally sell a lifestyle. 
and the products that go along with it. And his methods were quirky enough to get people talking about him. Oh, he eats chicken hearts and sleeps on a slab of wood on the floor and walks around barefoot. What a weird dude. Let me check him out. Would you check him out? Would you check out the liver king? She's like, I'll eat whatever animal products, I don't care. But he also had the body and the results to make people think that if they just follow what he says, they stick to his meal plans, they follow his workout routine and buy his supplements, that they can be primal too. They can be muscly and alpha and just completely win at life. He even had rules to live by, which were so clearly structured based on religion. You have the Ten Commandments, you have the nine consciousness levels of Buddhism, and you have the nine ancestral tenets of Liver King. These ancestral tenets are, and I'm going to read them for you, sleep, eat, move, shield, connect, cold, sun, fight bond which are in fact things that we need but they're more kind of seen as common sense or just like basic survival skills except for two because i will argue screw the cold i hate it don't need it and also fight can be left for you know when it's necessary for survival and although in his approximation of an apology liver king says that all he wants to do is to whoa help people and to, you know, raise their self-esteem and help them be their best selves. There is still no denying that all of this was heavily curated and marketed. We will ignore that I spilt coffee granules on the counter. He even says so himself in this email that was leaked from 29th of June, 2021, before he started posting as Liver King. So let's dig right in. As it relates to my goals, I'm the face of several brands, including Ancestral Supplements, and I've just hired a team to build the Liver King brand with the goal of 1 million followers by March, 2022. I'm pouring ridiculous resources into making this happen, including hosting a guy that will be living at my guest house, video guy, excuse me, and a film crew that will be filming seven days a month. Stated, I have to stay in great shape all year round. Maybe take one to two months off a year. Here's a clip of where I'm at currently. I've been working out for 35 years. I know how to eat, train, rest, and recover. I even have a hard shell hyperbaric chamber at my house. But as I've reached my mid forties, it's getting harder and the back fat kills me. To support these exhaustive efforts, I recently started taking Omnitrope, the 5.8 milligram vials from Empower Pharmacy, $11,000 per month for my new dose, which is at four vials a week or 16 vials a month. I don't know if this stuff is grossly underdosed or what, but I've been taking two vials per week and my IGF-1 is only at 139, whatever that means. My doctor told me that I could possibly double it in an effort to get to the upper 200s, low 300s. She thinks I could be a hyper non-responder. I'm wondering if taking a load of other peptides could be confounding the results and possibly interfering with the efficacy. For instance, Here's what I'm currently taking. And he lists a ton of things, none of which I've ever heard of before. My blood sugar, every morning it's around 74, and insulin are great because I'm metabolically fit as fuck. Or so I think. Some docs think my insulin is too low, but I think it's because I'm very insulin sensitive because I work out like a maniac, i.e. I train twice a day, six days a week, and walk 10 to 12 miles on my rest days. Can you help me dial in the PED and growth hormone protocol to maximize results? He says it himself right here. He put so many resources and so much effort into building a brand. He had a goal of gaining 1 million followers in less than a year, and he was taking the steroids to help him get there and, as he says, maximize results. There's also something to be said for the fact that this email kind of does confirm the idea that the influencer game really is pay to win, but maybe that's a conversation for another day. I like to mix my milk with hot water. <laughs> All of this boils down to the same tired statement. Influencers are lying to you. We hear it time and time and again. We know this. A lot of influencers, but not all, are lying to you. But even though we do know that, it can be hard to remember, especially when these influencers are preying on our insecurities and changing how they play the game. But what I will say to you is this, no matter what anybody says to you online, 
focus on your health. There is no one size fits all answer to diet and exercise. What works for me may not work for you and vice versa. And if you find yourself sacrificing part of your health, whether it's physical or mental, in the pursuit of some kind of look, ask yourself whether your goals are even realistic for you at all. You do not need to fit any kind of standard other than what's healthy and right for you. I do hope you enjoyed today's video. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about everything that we talked about today. Me and JavaScript would love to know. Oh, sorry, she wants me to ask you to subscribe. Um, it really helps me out a lot when you do that. And JavaScript would really appreciate it as well. <laughs> How can you say no to a tiny kitty who's putting her tail in my face? <laughs> And you can also turn on notifications, like the video, all of that. You know how it works. Share it with somebody who will enjoy it. And also, if you want to keep up with me, you can follow me on social media. I'm Vangelina Scott everywhere. Links for that and other fun things are in the description for you to check out. I know all of our lives are very busy, so thank you for choosing to spend this part of your day with me. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!